This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to build and run your own website. More on that later. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is, I don't know why I'm gonna say it's slightly different. It's not really slightly different, I just haven't done it before. Or at least I don't think I've done it before. Now I thought about this the other day and I was looking around this shop and I thought, God, okay, I've got a lot of different plants in this shop and it's inspired me to make, not a series, nothing like that. But I just wanna do a selection of videos on basically my top 10 whatevers of all time, right? And I thought, why not start with philodendron because everyone loves it. Let's just get cracking with the list. Some of these were a little bit hard to do and I, I'm definitely noticing a trend when I look at this list, but I want to start in at number 10, the Philodendron Luxurians. Now, I don't actually talk about this plant much, but I think I like it so much because I don't see it very often, okay? I have one in here. It's not looking amazing at all. It needed repotting about three years ago. Literally, it's not looking ideal. But I love, 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 love this plant, and they can be really, really pretty. Now, for whatever reason, I don't see much of them. I do think that they're a bit more difficult. They're definitely one of the most difficult crawling philodendron I think I've ever had, mainly in terms of, I'm pretty sure they are very, very, very water loving. It's so hard to explain. They're tough, but they're tough in the way that they won't necessarily die, but they will show you the results of whatever you've done wrong. Does that make sense? So if you've underwatered, they're gonna tell you about it. They're gonna show you. They do suffer from spider mites quite a lot. I realize I'm talking this plant down a little bit, but this is why it's in at number 10. It's basically for aesthetics, and the reason is I, I don't see it very often in collections. I assume because it is indeed a little bit more difficult. Certainly for the longest time, I actually do not know right now, as of recording this video, I do not know what this plant costs. I haven't got a clue. In fact, let's do the quickest Google ever to find out how much it costs. See what Equigena are doing them for. $28, so they are cheap. There was a long, 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 long time ago where they'd be about $100, $100 easy for a one leaf plant. Pleased to say, obviously that has dropped down, but I still don't see them often. I still don't see them often. I'm not saying it's the prettiest philodendron of all time, but they are quite sexy, especially when they get going. So let me know what you think about that. Are you surprised I said it? Because I do genuinely really like the plant. I just, I get enamored a lot now by the things I don't see enough, obviously, because with running this shop, I see a lot of things every day. So that's definitely why it is in there at number 10. However, let me get my list back up because we're on the googly. Right. Number nine. This is gonna cover maybe a couple of forms of this because I'm not really picky on the form, but I absolutely love this plant. It doesn't matter whether it's variegated or not, by the way. Disclaimer, everything in this list, it doesn't, I'm not thinking of a variegated plant when I mention these. But the next plant on my list at number nine is the Philodendron Golden Dragon. I feel like enough of you should have known I would mention this plant in this list. I don't know where you thought I would put it, but I absolutely love this plant. I do have a really big one on the wall. It's it's huge actually. The, the leaves aren't huge, but the plant is huge, if you feel me. And I do have, it's chopped up. It's up here, you can't see it. It's literally up here off camera on the top shelf of a aisle. And I have some narrow form. So I will put on the screen, if I can, two different forms of golden dragon. And I, I kind of like them both. There's pros and cons. A lot of people love the narrow. The narrow is seen as being a bit more bougie, I guess you could say. Is that the right word? You know what I mean? Just a bit more so after, I suppose. Narrow anything tends to go a little bit more, I would say. But I actually like them both. I I, I might even prefer the non-narrow. Dare I say it? Again, I'm looking this way because it's on my wall. I really like it. It does look a lot different from the narrow. Like it, they are visually, as you can probably see on the screen, they are very, very different visually. So let me know which one you prefer because I know the narrow, at least at one point, it was very, very in. It was the in thing. Um, but I don't know if it still is, but for me, it is just an amazing plant. It's one of my first philodendrons that I owned that was different and it was rare, but it wasn't like top end rare price. Oh my God, how do I get it? You, you could sort of get them. They were just a little bit pricey, if you know what I mean. And I, th those are some of my favorites. That was some of my, my most cherished memories when I started collecting rare plants. It actually wasn't the memories of collecting the super rare ones. It was the, the sort of what you'd call mid-tier ones that people were like really interested in and they were sought after because they were a little bit more obtainable. So it's actually one of my favorites and it still is. And I would love, 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 love to have it in my house. If you didn't know, I have kittens, so I have to be really careful with stuff like that. But 
We will see. Fingers crossed, guys. I'm going to get some arrows in this house. I really am. But that is number nine on the list. That is Philodendron and Golden Dragon. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Coming in at number eight, this is a new entrant, but I keep looking at it and I keep liking it. So it's going on the list. This is the, well, it's what I'm calling anyway, the Pastas Arnhem White. Now you can get Pastas Arnhem White. You can get Pastas Arnhem Silver. Personally, I'm not even sure they're full Pastas Arnhem. Maybe because obviously there is white and silver in there. I don't really know. They, they're also less um, gangly, less leggy than a pastas arnum, in my opinion. So I don't want to say that they're full pastas arnum, but I will obviously show you pictures of the plant I'm referring to. That is what I know it as. If you wanted to buy one for yourself, I would start there, personally. I would start with pastas arnum white or pastas arnum silver, something like that, and you should find essentially this plant. I just don't like putting out a name if I've got it from a supplier and it's maybe not the right name, if you know what I mean. But that's why I've sold them as, that's why I know it as. And I just love this plant because of how silver it is. And I like the fact that it doesn't fully behave like a pastas on them because I've always found them very pretty, but just a bit leggy and a bit Ugh. So I'm kind of pleased that this one does seem to stay stumpier. I have, a whole, I have a full tray there actually. And you know what? I can see two different types because I know that I have a white and I know I have a silver. And I might be talking, as I'm figuring this out now, I might be talking about the silver because I feel like I have a white there and it is very white and I actually prefer it less. Honestly, I don't get it either, but a lot of the time I prefer things that are a bit more subtle. So I'm probably talking about the silver, but honestly, it's a lovely plant, sizes up really well, really easy to look after. Haven't found any problems with pests. I know pastas on them can be, they can be a bit of a magnet for pests sometimes, but I haven't really found any problems. So it's definitely on my list at number eight and I enjoy it very much, albeit a newcomer. Right, coming in at number seven, it's my first like, you, you can't really call it variegated, but something like, ooh, what is this kind of thing? And that is the Philodendron Whipple Way. These plants are literally amazing. Not so much for the shape of the leaves or anything like that, although they are nice. Obviously, it's more for the color. So if you don't know, and I, I probably could grab one, but I suspect they're all tangled up. Whipple Way, they have this really beautiful transformation. And of course, there will be a picture on the screen. It might not be as impressive as maybe a large specimen. I'm probably showing you a smaller one because I haven't taken any pictures recently, I don't think. But they can come in like a, a minty white or a pink, and then they fade down to like a minty white to a minty green. And they never really go full green when the leaves harden off. They, they do genuinely stay a much lighter tone of green. And I really, really like them. And that is definitely why they're on this list. It is 100% a color thing because I don't know many plants that will have that sort of color change and look that good consistently. They are so pretty. To top that off, they do have like a, like a speckled effect, like an eggshell aerosol sort of effect on the leaves. I love that as well. I love everything about this plant. They are, I think they're more affordable now. They definitely, when they came onto the scene, they were very expensive. They're still not cheap, I don't think, at all. I think they're low triple dig digits, I think. Can't speak today. But they've definitely come down a lot. So if you're wanting to get them, now is definitely, definitely approaching the time to get them if you want to push the button on them. But I love it so much. I've known about this plant since I started my first ever rare plant index. So I've known about it a long time and I wanted it for a long time. It was on a wish list for a long time and I love them. They're really easy to grow and I genuinely recommend them. They're very, very easy to just have and propagate. So that's got to be on there. We love a good Whipple. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. Squarespace have so many templates. They're not dated looking, they're not all the same with just the fonts and colors switched out, out, they're really unique. You're bound to find a layout that really appeals to you as a starting point. Then of course you can customize and go from there. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me guys. Back to the video.
Coming in at number six, I love this plant so much, and I am aware that there are different versions of this plant, but when I think about this plant, I'm probably thinking about the one that is in my living wall. That is Philodendron Plowmanii, but it is it has no silver on it, basically, or minimal silver. There is a name for the plant that does not have silver on it. I'm not going to use that name because it's probably an old name. It wasn't the best name to use, uh, but I, so I don't know how to refer to it is what I'm saying as of recording this video. I don't know what you call it. I just know it's a Plowmanii with uh, a lack of silver anyway. I do think mine can get silver on it, but it, it's, it's not really there, if you know what I mean. I have one that can't and I have sold it as probably dark form or something like that. That's probably the name I've used for it. I do have some others with silver on. I don't hate the plant or anything. It's just for some reason, I, again, I just like muted things sometimes. I like the more subtle plants. Sorry, I, I swear to God, I have cat hair or something around my nose and I can't, I can't stop. I'm so sorry if that annoys people. I, it's the itchiest thing ever. I don't know where it's coming from. I have no idea where it's coming from. Uh, uh, literally. But yeah, absolutely adore that plant. Um, you may not know that you can get slightly different types of plant money eye. Maybe this is your sign to Google it. I don't know. I don't know. But I really, really love the plant. And I, I wish I had more of it because mainly at the moment, I did sell off all of my small ones that were, they were basically taken from the living wall plant, the mother. So I should probably restart some because I know people like them. So I think they'd always sell. Not for necessarily a pretty penny, but they're nice plants and they sell. And they're so easy. Oh my God, <laughs> you cannot kill these plants. They're absolutely fantastic. We love a sturdy crawler. We love a sturdy crawler up in this shop. Love crawlers anyway, but we love a sturdy one. Right, in at number five, fresh down the middle, straight in there, we have a very common affordable plant that I cannot not mention because it is stunning. It is borderline goth plant. I feel like anybody can like this plant. Anyone can take care of this plant. It's just really easy. It propagates well. If you've got one that's looking a little bit thin, you can cut it. You can, you know, replant it and make it bushy. You can do all of the things, guys. Philodendron micans. What are we saying? What are we saying? Do you love it? Do you not love it? Because I've had I've had a lot of um, you know trailing philodendron. I've obviously had the heteraceum, also known at some point as the scandens, the philodendron scandens. That's the all green, non velvet half -le half leaf, half leaf, half leaf, half leaf. I've had the Brazil as well that I, that I ended up not caring for. Actually, I, I don't I don't think I like that plant anymore at all. I think it actually irritates me when I look at it. A bit bizarre. I've had obviously the cream splash, which is sort of like an upgraded version of that. But I really, really, really like my mic more than anything and I've had it years and I've had to just give it a big haircut again because it keeps trailing off my shelves and touching the floor and growing along the floor. It is so voracious, is that the right word? It, it just doesn't stop. So if you are wanting to get something that's a little bit gothic, so easy, so affordable, looks really beautiful and jungly and delicate and, and just amazing and hang it off a shelf, please get that plant. Of all the trailing plants, please pick that. I don't care whether it's Hoya, I don't care if it's Epipremnum, I don't care if it's Skindapsis, or you can get some very nice ones. Literally, best plant ever. Best plant ever. I love it. I will never not speak volumes about it. It's beautiful. Ooh, in at number four, I'm cheating slightly. I, I'm cheating a lot, actually. These, these are two plants, but I sort of couldn't pick between them, so I thought I'd just mention them both. Why not? So we have, in at number four, a joint thing. We have the philodendron serpents and the philodendron, I do believe it is squammy cold blood. So I think it's one that I showed on camera a couple of weeks ago. And hopefully I've got pictures of both. Hopefully. They are not the same plant, but there are so many similarities. One is like hairier than the other. One is darker than the other. One is redder than the other. But generally they give off the same vibe. And I think if you're a collector of rare plants, you could have them both and have a great time. If you're less fussed and you want to try something out, you can try just one of them. And I think if you're going to try one of them, I would actually suggest the Squammy Call, even though it's probably more expensive. I feel like it's actually a bit tougher than the Serpents. I've had plenty of problems with Serpents. Um, I used to think it was easy, then I've, I've since sort of decided it's probably not as easy. It's not hard, but it's not as easy. Um, and I, I just think that the, the Squammy Call being dark and sort of sexy, it just gives you a little bit more bang for your buck. So although it is more expensive, I would honestly say it's probably a bit of a safer bet. So let me know which one you prefer. Let me know if you think I'm a bit stupid for pairing them. I don't think I am. I think you can see where I'm going with this. But generally speaking, when I put these in at this entry, I'm talking about hairy shit, guys. 
I don't mind a bit of hairy shit. Well, when it's a petiole, anyway. But I, I really like the plants, and I think you will too. And honestly, I, I know people are divided on this because I know that the hairiness does actually freak some people out. I've had, I've had plenty of people do that. For me, it don't. It don't. I really, really like it. So let me know what you think of that. And let me know if you've got a squammy call blood and how it's doing for you, because I'm finding it quite tough. Not the quickest to propagate, quite slow actually, but they don't really seem to die off. So that's, I guess that's good anyway, because the cost price of them is not incredible. It's not incredible at all. I feel like my hair is just, it's just not great. It's because it's so humid in here. What are we at? We're like 85 degrees. We're, we're 80 degree. 80 degrees humidity. That's not ideal. 80 degrees? What is wrong with me today? I'm so tired. 80% humidity. Anyway, in at number three, a plant that I, you know what it is? I haven't held it up recently. I haven't mentioned it recently. I haven't fallen out of love with it at all. I just feel like the plant just generally dropped off and I genuinely want to hear your opinions on this just to make sure that I'm not going absolutely crazy. So the plant I want to talk about in a number three, it is number three, is the Philodendron El Choco Red. What an amazing plant, guys. What an amazing plant. I do have one. You won't see it. It's on the other aisle there. It's not done amazingly since I moved it here. I don't think it loved the, the humidity change and it has actually had spider mites once or twice. I think they actually they came from my house and then we had a couple of problems so it's kind of like a long sort of stem with three leaves on it but the leaves are very big and very sexy but still I'm not getting rid of it it's got great genetics we'll be fine I might propagate it if I don't think I'll kill it and that is one of the reasons why I don't think they've never been they've never been like a massive household item and I think a lot of it is the propagation aspect because they're easy to keep when you've got them and they're rooted and they're fine. I find them quite easy. They can get underwater a lot and everything else. They can tolerate a lot personally, but what they don't like is being propagated and they don't love root disturbance, especially when they are being propagated. Honestly, guys, the amount of times, right, I've propagated one of these things and I've taken head cutting, whatever, and I've got a beautiful, pretty leaf out of it. And I'm like, right, is it ready to sell? I check the roots. I check the roots and they're great. And all I do is plop it back in the lecker, put it back in its pot and, and put a tag in it and photograph it and everything else. And I will come back when it's time for these things to be shipped out and it's just rotted for no reason. So the roots can be very, very, very temperamental. Other than that, all of those things aside, I still don't really see the plants. Maybe they are still a devil to propagate even at a higher level. Maybe tissue culture isn't as... I don't know, maybe it's just not as forthcoming. I don't know. If you know the answer, let me know. And let me know if I'm completely wrong and they are literally everywhere. Because I don't see people really talk about them. I don't really see them in collections. I don't really see them for sale. Not saying they're rare. I'm saying I feel like people don't have interest, which is very, very different. So let me know if I'm right or wrong. I'm very curious. Right, in at number two, I think at this point you guys might have, you, you will know me well enough by now, I feel like you guys will probably know the last two plants and if I say one then you know what the other is and where it places if that makes sense. And this was hard, this was hard. But in at number two I have the Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now then, I've never not recommended this plant. This plant is fantastic. This plant and me go way back, way, way back. God, it's been the subject of like minimal scandal. I've had, we had that thing in COVID where I had a box of them delivered that was like lost for three months and some of them were alive. Like I've gone through so much with this plant. I've had a couple of my own. They are still here, but they, they really need a trim. They're just growing like nobody's business. I do have, do I have a tray of them? I do actually, and some of them are quite white. That's quite cute. But I, I really love this plant and I keep saying every year, usually springtime, this plant does the rounds and all the growers will have it and it'll look fantastic and people buy it and the price is a little bit elevated. So as much as I'd like to say if you want it, buy it in the winter, I don't really see it for sale in the winter. Uh, I, it'd be nice if they did. I don't really see why they don't because I don't think they're selling anything else seasonally. But you know what I mean, guys, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do agree. You only really see it in spring and summer. Soon as winter hits, Florida ghosts just disappear. And if you missed out on one that year, you can get a cutting from someone in winter or whatever on Facebook or whatever have you, or you wait till spring and you pay a bit more money. I don't know. It just seems to happen. It just seems to happen. It makes no sense to me. But again, I love it so much. The shape is adorable. It's, it's the same as a Florida beauty 
pretty as well, don't get me wrong. But it's just, it's a plant that looks cute at every stage. It doesn't need to get mature to look hot. It can look really, and I mean really adorable when it's young. The leaves have just the cutest little shape. And it just gets a bit older, it looks lovely. Gets a bit older, it looks, you know, different again. And you get a really nice change in both leaf shape, very quickly I might add, and leaf colour. Because they come in that lovely whitey, minty, creamy colour and then they fade down. You get a really nice red petiole as well when they are very nice and white. They're just a beautiful plant to look at. They're a beautiful plant to look at. And they do very well on a pole when you you actually like clump them together around a pole in the same way that you might do like a variegated monstera. You might have like more around the base and make it bushier. They do beautifully, beautifully clumped together. So if that's something you think you want to do, if your, your plant's getting a little bit large on the top, literally, if you've got one on a pole, chop it, root it, stick it back in around the bottom, you will have the most beautiful bush. Honestly, so beautiful. But I put them in at number two, just because I maybe I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I can tell you why it's in at number two and not number one. I just think the plant I've got in at number one, which I'm sure as hell people are screaming at the TV now, but I, I don't know. There's just something about it that pips it for me. And I, I don't even think I can give you a reason why. It was just how I felt at the time when I made this list. Maybe in six months I might change my mind. But compared to that, the plant at number one. If you haven't already guessed, guys, it's the Philodendron Gloriosum. Now, there are, oh God, literally, do we even know where we're at with all the different forms? There are different forms of Gloriosum, namely, you know, like a darker form, a rounder form, a form with brighter veins, a form with more minimal veins, that kind of shit. There's there's a lot. And I honestly believe at one point or another, I've had, I've had every single form in this shop. I have a few large, uh, large, I have a few round forms. I definitely, definitely have a lot of them with very, very nice veins. I have plenty of them with minimal veins. I know I have a couple of dark forms. They're not easy to get. They're not easy to spot, but I do have a couple of those. I've definitely had a couple of those. I sold a beautiful one, you know, in, it was either 2020 or 2021. I don't know who bought it, but I, I wish I hadn't sold that. I love that plant so much. I should not have sold that. I regret that. But I just love the plant. It's just so easy and it, it looks so jungly so quickly. It's really forgiving. You can propagate it really well. Even when it's leggy, it doesn't look horrific. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not like a McDowell, um, a Pastazanum, that kind of thing. It, it stays a little bit more like a Plowmanii. It does stay quite short and stout. So even if you've got like a lower light situation than maybe what's ideal, it'll go more before it looks worse, if you know what I mean. Um, I should do a, a video if I haven't already, I can't remember if I have, on plants that are good for low light because they don't get too elongated, for example, and they can stay kind of short. But in in terms of that, as an example, I would tell you to choose a Plowmanii, a Gloriosum, over something like a Pastazanum, a, a McDowell, that kind of thing. But I just... It just looks great, guys. It always looks good. It always looks good. And if it doesn't look perfect, give it one little feed and it will just look incredible. They always look great. It's very, very classic. It's such a classic plant. I don't think, well, I mean, I might have to stop selling it if it gets obviously too low value, but I'd be sad to stop selling it because I love it so much. I have so much of it. Funny enough, it's not on these aisles anymore. I'm in what I call aisle two in my shop. Um, they've all been moved to those aisles and I can see loads of different types when I look up, but I know I've been putting some in rescue boxes because I, I literally, I didn't really sell them in 2020. I kept them back. So I've been very greedy because I like them that much. They just look too nice on my shelves. I didn't sell them, but I now have so many that it's like they need to go out in rescue boxes <laughs> because there's just too many, but I still love them. I always will. I just... I can't recommend them enough, guys. They're so good. And they're so affordable now, by the way. You can probably go into most garden centers and find one at some point. So if you've ever waited, now is definitely your time. I can't imagine them getting stupidly more cheaper than what they are. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're very cheap already. So if you're wanting one, couldn't recommend it enough. Just maybe do a little bit of Googling on the different types to make sure you get the type you want. Like most people, for example, don't really want the type with not a lot of veinage unless you're a collector. Most people want something with bright veins. Um, I don't know how people feel about like round form versus non-round form. Personally, I like the form that is not round more, just me. I like the more definitive heart-shaped ones, each to their own. I'm sure everyone loves a dark form because it's always in, right? Dark plants are always in. But if you want one, get looking, pick your type because you won't regret it. They're so, so, so good. 
And that is it for this week's video on my top 10 philodendron of all time. Now, if I've forgotten something and you're like, oh my God, but you love this plant, please write it in the comments. Please write it in the comments because I want to be irritated because I feel like I have forgotten something. I honestly, honestly do. I think I said something similar to this about last week's video. I feel like there is something glaring that I've forgotten. Now, I do want to do more of these, as I mentioned at the start. Let me know which one you want to see next. So it could be Syngonium, it could be Alocasia, which for some reason I feel like people are going to suggest I don't know why. Maybe because I talk about them less. Uh, we've got Monstera, we've got Anthurium. What else could we do? I'm looking around. It could be anything really. It could still be like Spathophyllum, could be the Maranta, could be anything you like. Anything you like. Could be Hoya. Fuck it. Could be anything. Let me know which one you'd like to see next in the comments and I'm going to love you and leave you. Let me know what your top plants are. You don't have to do a top 10. I realize that's a lot of typing and you'll get sore thumbs. Maybe a top three or even just a top one. A top one will do because I want to see where mine compares because I think mine are, dare I say, generic. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit basic when it comes to that. I, d I don't know. Let me know if you think I'm basic when it comes to my philodendron. I won't be offended. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this week's video, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I make content that you enjoy. And if you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you do so. Because fun fact, 50% of you that watch my videos are subscribed. 50%. 50%. So if you fancy increasing those odds, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.